Welcome to Chaos of Clarity. I'm meteorologist Bernie Reno. First Chaos to Clarity. We're not dealing with snow. We're dealing with severe weather, and there's going to be severe weather beginning tonight across Texas, but then across the central Gulf Coast states as we go through tomorrow. We have a high threat for severe weather here with the impacts mostly this, widespread damaging winds. That's going to be the main threat. As far as tornadoes are concerned, I'm thinking about 10 to 15 tornadoes on the ground. I could see up to two dozen but I think it's going to be somewhere in that range here. There's going to be some hail, but these are the biggest impacts. The tornadoes, widespread wind damage. The widespread, the, the wind damage is the big one, though. Some of the cities, Little Rock, Arkansas, Shreveport, and Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and also Jackson, uh, Mississippi here. All right, let me show you the setup here. It's the uh, upper low that we're tracking across the Intermountain West as we go through uh, today. Here it is. This is the upper low right in here. Now, watch what happens with this as we go forward here. That's going to move eastward. I'm going to stop it tomorrow morning right here. Here's where I think everything really gets going here. I'm going to stop this at 7 a.m. Look at the upper low. You have a closed off upper low. This is the piece of energy that rounds the base of the trough that really sets off the severe weather. I think this is going to explode after 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Watch this trough. See how that comes around the base? And then, boom, look at that. That's tremendous amount of wind. This is a 500 millibar. I think that's 90 knots of wind in this area, right in here. All right, and then that just continues to swing eastward tomorrow evening. So here you go. This is what it's going to do. You start getting into that white area, you're almost at 85, no, you're about 90 knots of wind. I mean, this is a tremendous amount of wind with this trough coming eastward. It even tries to go a little negatively tilted. You see that in here. So a lot of wind on the side. Now, do we have, uh, you know, we let's look at the, uh, let me look at the dew point temperatures here really quick. And you can see here are, this is the dew point temperatures coming on up. This is tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. The dew point we look at is about 60 degrees. Here it is. Plenty of dew point temperatures. Watch that come northward. Plenty of moisture here right in there. You see that? 65 getting up right toward the Arkansas, Louisiana state line here. This is at around 1 o'clock, and then we'll take it to 7 o'clock, and you can see how that translates eastward in the, eastward in the Mississippi. Now, the, the question is, do you have too much cloud cover? Do you have enough instability? I believe you do, but boy, oh boy, do you have the wind energy. Uh, I want to show you one of the things I really like looking at is the uh, low-level jet, right? And, and what we're looking at here, I showed you the 500 millibar. This is the winds at around uh, 500 millibar, uh, 5,000 feet, 850 millibars. Watch this. Watch what this does. So we're looking at this time frame right here between 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. See how that you have all this energy coming east? See that? And then there's 7 p.m. So what does it look like with the low-level jet? Watch this low-level jet from 1 a.m. Tuesday morning to 7 a.m. Look at that right in here. Now watch this explode from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. Right there. See that? Right there. Look at this area right in here. Now, we looked at the dew point temperatures in this area a short time ago. Dew point temperatures riding up in the middle 60s. There's the low-level jet intersecting that. And think about it this way. You not only do you have a lot of wind energy, but it's increasing, right? Because you go from let me let me put this man so you could see this again. You're going from this from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. You see how that? So you're almost like doing this in the atmosphere. You're moving fast, but not only you're moving fast, you're increasing the movement, right? So you're increasing the upward motion in here. This looks really nasty. I think you're going to get a tremendous squall line here with damaging winds. And along the squall line, you're going to get uh, embedded tornadoes within that squall line. All right. And then you can see how the low-level jet continues. This is 1 o'clock. Watch what it does at 7 o'clock. Keeps going. If anything, it increases a little bit across Mississippi and Tennessee. So, And then during the overnight, it's still going, but you're really starting to get pretty far away from the upper low, which is pretty far north at this point. So in a sense, the instability is outrunning the upper low a little bit here. So I, I really think the worst time frame tomorrow is right in here from from 7 a.m., 1 o'clock, 7 p.m. You see that right in here, and that's where you get the low-level jet that goes from here to here 
and then it starts the weekend and becomes a little diffuse here. So this is the main time frame from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. tomorrow. I think I, I think you're going to get a tremendous squall line in here that's going to have widespread damaging winds, and I think there's going to be tornadoes in this area. I really do. Now, I actually think there could be over two dozen tornadoes, but the reason I'm saying the 10 to 15 is I want to show you some other tools I, I, I want to look at here. Um, let me show you something. Uh, I have some analog guidance here. Here it is. So what I did was I looked in, in this area, the upper low and the pressure, what were analogs, years that were similar. Now, it's not perfect, but when you look at this, this is, um, what is the date on this? Let me go back a second. Uh, I missed the date on this. This was 2007, February 25th. So within a week of this. So what did we have on this date? We had 15 tornadoes, five significant and eight long track. Look at the area. Pretty similar to what we're looking at now. All right. That's one analog based on the upper air and the surface pattern here. That's that's one analog. This next analog, I'm going to throw it out because it's March 27th. You know, it had how many tornadoes here? 12, three significant, one long. It's a number, but it's March 29th. It's a little far away from what we're looking at now. And the last analog that I think is worth looking at here, this is uh, 2008, February 17th, so about two weeks. What did you end up having here? Um, 24 tornadoes, five significant long track. They're a little spread out. This looks to me, by looking at, at the area right now, the top analog is here, about 15 tornadoes. That's why I'm, I'm saying about 10 to 15 based on this. But I'll tell you what, that low-level jet really has me nervous that they're, they're, that this squall line, at the very least, you're going to get a lot of wind reports with this, and you're going to get, a, I'm afraid, some wind damage here. A, another thing we can look at, if you look at the the analogs with, with the tornado threat tomorrow, if you look at the analogs, the analogs are pointing toward the, the Jackson, Mississippi area. It, it's basically our high-risk area tomorrow. I'll show you in a second that this is the area that you'd be looking for for tornadoes. Um the machine learning, for what it's worth, we can look at that. Uh, it really has some high levels of wind here, uh, 0.49. So it has a, a, a more than a medium, more than a high probability of damaging winds in this area in Louisiana and Mississippi. The tornado threat's a little lower. It doesn't have a high tornado threat here. It has 0. 0.144, so it's right in here level. So it, it doesn't show a significant amount. So that's why I tempered my tornado threat down a little bit. I thought there could be two dozen to maybe three dozen, but a lot of the other tools like the analogs, the machine learning are saying, eh, it's more of a damaging wind. So that's why I brought that number down. But nonetheless, I mean, it, 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 it's going to be a significant event, uh, unfortunately, I'm afraid, um, uh, tomorrow. Let me, let me uh, go back to me full here. I want to turn this down a little bit here and this is our high risk for tomorrow here it includes Little Rock Shreveport in toward Jackson Mississippi now a lot of this Dallas your threat is coming tonight between 4 and 7 a.m. tomorrow morning New Orleans 3 to 6 for you this area is a lot late morning in the early afternoon this is when I really think it gets going here I think after 7 o'clock tomorrow morning this line which would be uh I'll tell you what, let me show you future radar here, and we'll go over the timing, but this is the area to watch, and in particular, I think this zone in here, I bet you this is where we get most of the tornadoes tomorrow. And again, I'll stick with the 10 to 15. Part of me think this there's going to be about two dozen based on that low-level jet, but a lot of the other tools say eh, it's not going to be that many here. Let me show you uh, future radar here to give you a kind of an idea of what this what this is going to look like here. So uh, let me play this out here. So here we go. I'm going to play this out. This is the beginning of the line right now around midnight tonight. And then we'll play this forward. Here comes the threat for Dallas. That's around 4 a.m. Now you notice these look like lines of thunderstorms. I think this is mostly going to be damaging winds. I really do. 
I think this is mostly damaging wind. Can I see an isolated tornado or two? Sure, but I think it's mostly damaging winds. Then, remember, we're talking about the time frame after 7 a.m., so that's 8 a.m. Eastern. So I'm going to stop it right here. So here's the beginning, and you start seeing some discrete cells, these individual cells. This is where I think you're starting to increase the tornado threat here. Around uh, This is 8 o'clock Central. Or let's go back. Um, I said 7 o'clock Eastern, so that would be 6 o'clock Central. Right in here is where I think you're starting to increase the tornado threat here. Let's play this forward. We'll take it to around noon. Here it comes in toward Little Rock. Uh, Shreveport, uh, Monroe, Lake Charles. Again, it looks like a lot of lines, although I bet you you're going to have isolated tornadoes down in here. Uh, then we'll take you into the afternoon hours, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. Now we're starting to talk about jet right here. Now this starts to look very suspicious to me at 3 o'clock. Here's your main line, but then you have these little clusters in here, and you see how they're bent a little bit and stretch. I think these are... This is probably a tornado threat in here, especially these cells in here near Jackson. That's about 3 o'clock. And then we'll continue to move forward here. Uh, the threat's coming through Memphis right around 3 o'clock Central Time. And then we take it to about 5, 6 o'clock. This looks to me like you've got broken lines, and these look to me like these are all tornadic thunderstorms in here. So again, I'd really watch this area uh, in here. I'd watch this area in here for tornadoes tomorrow. All right, tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening. So pretty dynamic setup here. And that low-level jet uh, is, is really what has me a little worried tomorrow. All right. So um, I'm going to end with this so you guys get a chance to see this again in case you didn't see it. This is our high-risk area for tomorrow in the red. I think you're going to see a lot of damaging winds here. We have 70 to 80 miles per hour with an AccuWeather local storm max of 100. I think tornadoes, again, I'm going to stick with the 10 to 15. Part of me thinks it's, it could be two dozen, but a lot of the other things I look at say it's going to be less. I, I respect analogs and the machine learning, so about 10 to 15 tornadoes in here. But uh, this is going to be a nasty day on Tuesday. If you have any questions or comments, you can follow me on Twitter. Uh, I'm at uh, Accurano. We'll keep an eye on this. As we go forward, I'll leave you with this. Make sure you stay safe over the next 24 hours.